Hi, I'm uh, starting a little bit late. I think I checked a bunch of people in here, so welcome. Uh, just a fair warning, it is about 3 a.m. for me right now, so I'm trying, uh, but looking forward to this. All right, so today's presentation, I'm talking about RMT um, and how you can use it if you have a lot of machines locally, uh, maybe at your house, or you run something for like your company, or you run something for a, a club, like a, a LAN club, I don't know. Um, my name is Cameron Cumberland, and I'm an employee of SUSE. But there we go. Okay, so this is the roadmap for the presentation. I'm going to be covering what RMT is, the use cases for RMT, how to set it up and install it, um, and a little bit about a future potential other use cases that I see um, for this product. All right, so I'm coming from UTC minus seven, Portland, Oregon, hence the slurred words. I did not have one of the OpenSUSE beers, I'm just exhausted. Um, I'm a member of the OpenSUSE community. I go by Orbis online, um, on Reddit also Orbis Terrace. Uh, I work for SUSE as a support engineer, so feel free to ask me all of your Linux questions. I do that for a living. <laughs> all right, so what is RMT anyways? I keep using this acronym, tech is full of acronyms. What the hell is he talking about? Uh, these are some potential, you know, acronyms for RMT. We have rich monkey time. I'm sure everyone remembers the hellscape that was 2021. Um, but actually, it's repository mirroring tool. Um, fair warning, I come to tech uh, self-taught as a humanities person. So if the person who wrote RMT is present, I'm just going over this as like a, a generic user. Um, it's an open source project written in Ruby from SUSE. Uh, it provides local repositories from anywhere. Anything that's open on, accessible on the open web, you can pull them down to your server internally and serve them to your clients over LAN. Um, it's essentially a proxy, um, hence the proxy picture at the bottom there, but it has some nice functionality to it. All right. Why RMT? So why should you go through the trouble spending about 25 minutes setting this up, right? Your time is precious. 25 minutes, you could do anything. That's like three espressos. Um, to alleviate external network traffic is one of the big ones. Um, if you have data capped plans or you have really slow connections, uh, my parents have a 25 megabyte per second limit. Um, downloading tumbleweed updates when it's like, you know, a gigabyte every couple days is painful. <laughs> and they used to live on a boat with intermittent radio signal and it was the worst. Um, it's also fast depending on your internal network infrastructure. Um, I was able to download text live packages in about 13 seconds, right? From my local RMT server to my tumbleweed uh, to this laptop right here. That's pretty good, 13 seconds. I can, I can spend 13 seconds in my day. Um, because self-hosting is geeky and cool, we're here voluntarily. I think we're all okay with being called geeks. Uh, I know I am. Uh, also, because you have too many local machines that take too long to update otherwise. Uh, one of the problems with Tumbleweed, well, not a problem, it's great, um, is the frequency of updates. Every other day, every three days, you know, you're pulling down a couple, you're pulling down several gigabytes a week, easily. Um, doing that across multiple machines, remembering to do that, eh, takes a lot of time. It might come at an inopportune moment. Maybe I'm on a Zoom call, and then trying to download a bunch of Tumbleweed files messes up my internet. Um, the other benefit of RMT that's not on here is you can host it behind a firewall. So let's say you have an air gap system, um, you can connect it to RMT, you can connect RMT to the internet repos, and then you can pull only from that local RMT server to your machine. So I don't know what you're doing, you have an air gap system at home, but maybe you do. Uh, this is me with some of my machines. So this is about half of them, uh, as I'm sure most people here have quite a few. All right, uh, those of you who can read binary, uh, that is 42, and that is a reference to Hitchhiker's Guide from the Gal to the Galaxy. Uh, so before we go into setup, there are some hardware requirements for RMT. Uh, the official SUSE documentation recommends two gigabytes minimum. I think four is a little bit more appropriate, especially if you're gonna be using more than one client at a time to upload, like you have a cron job that runs and multiple clients will be uploading at midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, you'll probably want four gigabytes. Storage, uh, this depends on the operating systems that you're downloading. Um, Tumbleweed is about 150 gigabytes, Leap is about 150, Ubuntu is anywhere from 100 to 
400, depending on how many backports you're getting. Um, it will run on any OpenSUSE version or a SLE version, but you know, I prefer Leap for now. <clears throat> the system that I'm running it on uh, is OpenSUSE Leap 15.4 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's a bit of overkill. It's a little tiny HP box. Um, and then the disk setup, as you can see on the right, I have one terabyte hard drive for RMT. That's where I'm serving my repos from. Uh, I have a partition, I have separate drives for root and for home. That's not required, that's just, I'm paranoid. We're missing a slide. Anyways. All right, so the way to install RMT is through YAST, which probably everyone is familiar with. It's pretty simple. Um, the package is just YAST2 RMT. Um, you install that, YAST will grab all of your you know, dependencies, all the other requirements. It'll start the Mariah database. Um, pretty straightforward. Just follow the prompts. Um, do make sure that you set up your FQDN for the RMT server before doing this. Um, something like RMT serve dot your name dot home or dot internal or whatever else you have. Uh, if you operate your own internal DNS, you're already fine. You don't need me to tell you that. Um, after you install RMT and it's up and running, recommend checking to make sure that it's working because sometimes it does not actually start itself um, and you'll get error outputs in the systemd service. And then there's the, so I added some services as well that we go into later, but. So anything that you want to mirror, um, on your RMT server, you can do so. Anything that talks to the open web, anything that you can access freely, or even if you have like a code, right? Like you could mirror uh, proprietary repositories as long as you can pass the authentication from your RMT server to the uh, cloud you know, repository. Um, here, this is an example. This is the tumbleweed repositories, um, and there's the URLs. There's a zipper list here on the left. So mirroring these is pretty simple. Uh, the one somewhat annoying thing about RMT is everything is RMT-CLI and then spaces, multiple spaces, lots of spaces. Um, it's, all, it's all available online, the documentation. It's fairly straightforward. It's not very extensive. Um, but you do have to specify, people who add zipper repos will recognize the syntax. RMT, repos, custom, add, the URL, and then the name. And I give all of mine cute little names because I like to keep track of them that way. Uh, actually mirroring repos, um, this takes a bit of time depending on your internet service. Um, this runs in the current shell. I recommend using Tmux screen or putting it in the background or something like that so you don't have to sit there for you know seven hours while it downloads 800 gigabytes. Um, as of writing, excuse me, the Tumbleweed update repository had issues. Not really sure what they are. It was something with a GPG key wasn't, like the, the new 4096 bit GPG key wasn't used to sign the repository itself, and that's causing an error. Um, so, forewarning, I'm not a systemd person. I know enough to make things work. I do not know what I'm doing, but they tend to work the way I want them to. So, I'm happy, you know? Uh, so I create my own service to mirror the Tumbleweed repositories because I don't want to have to do this manually, and I have it run every five to seven hours, depending on how I feel. Um, so I just copy the system sync timer over and the service, and then modify them accordingly. I have no idea if this is recommended. If this is a horrible idea, someone please tell me afterwards. Because I've been doing this for a while, and maybe it's really dangerous. <laughs> These are my services. Well, the timer and then the service. Um, again, I don't know systemd. And these will all be put online on the GitHub after, well, after as well, just because there's nothing really out there for custom RMT setups, so I figured I'll do my part. Um, using RMT is pretty simple, so this is client configuration. Um, you will need to fetch the, cert the certificate for the RMT servers from the RMT server itself. Um, it's pretty easy. You can just wget or curl, however you want to grab it from the server. Um, it's the fqdn, uh, and it's just at the home directory slash rmt.crt. And you just copy that down to your client, move it to the right directory, the etsy pki trust anchors, which is where your system keeps 
trusted certificates, yeah, uh, and then you update your system's trust. Uh, then we also have to add the repositories to your client. Um, you can do this with Ansible scripting if you wanted to. You could do it with any other kind of like salt management if you have that set up. Uh, I only have you know a half dozen machines, but you just zipper AR the new local repository for your FQDN. Um, yeah. Disable your old repositories, enable the new ones. Uh, up here I'm disabling the download.opensusa.org and supplementing my twinos, twup, twidup. Uh, so this goes back to the kind of the why. Here's a speed test. And this is the same system, same hardware, about 15 minutes apart. Um, zipper in y download only text live. And text live is, you know, about 600 megabytes of packages. It's huge, right? Um, so on my, I get gigabit ethernet, 2.5 gigabits per second. Um, going to the outside repositories, it takes about four minutes for that to download. Internally, it takes about 13 seconds. Um, that's largely to do with the infrastructure uploads of the tumbleweed, of the OpenSUSE servers and not my internet connection. So if you're ever frustrated by how long tumbleweed takes to update or to install, um, during new installations you could also point tumbleweed to your internal RMT server and fetch updates from that. So the future, what will RMT be? And I'm just here saying this, the project manager is probably also here, but you know, I have thoughts. <clears throat> uh, I put container in there because it's a buzzword, as everyone knows. Um, I think one of the things I would like to actually do with uh, RMT is remove the SCC calls. Um, right now they're a systemd component and I think we could just turn that off but there might also be other like SUSE proprietary bits in there that it tries to trigger all the time. Um, you know, I just don't like seeing errors even if they're things that like don't really matter. It's just saying like, hey, you can't access SLES 12 repos. You don't have a key. You're not paying for it. I don't really want to see those error messages in my logs so I might get rid of them. Um, it'd be nice to formalize the integration of OpenSUSE with RMT maybe making some of the uh, command line options a little bit more cohesive, a little bit more coherent, a little bit more streamlined, rather than having to do rmt-cli repos custom add OpenSUSE stuff. What if there was like a short command to just rmt-cli mirror tumbleweed or OpenSUSE or micro OS, right? And it would just pull down the URLs and all would be well. That would be nice. Um, all right, thank you. All right, questions here in the front. Uh, can you temporarily blacklist a package so that it's not mirrored? The question is, can you temporarily blacklist a package so that it's not mirrored? Um, I don't think so. But it's, I mean, do you want it to not be mirrored because you don't want to serve it to any clients or because you don't want it to be like pulled down at all? Like you want to like lock it? I don't want it to be served. I don't want to exit the, the like, I don't want it Never get you don't want to ever get it. There might be a way to do that. I'm not sure of one. Um, I haven't really looked around like the code base for RMT and how it like actually pulls the mirrors. I'm pretty sure it just pulls down everything though from the repos. Like it just it just mirrors the entirety of the repo MD XML. So, but it it's possible. Is it easy? My guess is no. <laughs> that would always work. I want some stuff from the I mean, the easiest way to do it would be to put like a zipper lock on the clients, right? That would just prevent them from going to the clients. You still have to mirror the package from the repository onto RMT, but it wouldn't be served. So. Yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mine is along the same lines. Uh, I live in a network poor environment. So, for example, mirroring uh, tumbleweed every so often, it's a lot of bandwidth that I don't have. In, for example, if I want to mirror something from uh, OBS, like the games repository, and I know I will never install Flight Gear, which is about two gigabytes every time, I I just want to block that. So, so essentially, what I'm looking for is like partial <coughs> mirror. Like I know which parts I can use and which parts I can't use. So that would be a great feature, actually. Yeah, you could the mirror. The current recommended specific. thing that I found was you know just go through the regular mirroring with rsync and just exclude everything, and that's the best that I found. So I thought this might be 
this might have something better for me other than a giant rsync exclude list. <laughs> you don't have like a rejects, long reject string to... Yeah, actually my use case where I came here for curiosity uh, is a similar, but I would go further and do it the other way, like like doing whitelisting. Um, now I think I'll more look, like, look at squid and similar things. Would it be possible to drop the air gap case and have it act as something like a cache? So like you request a package, it doesn't have it, so it will pull it down and say wait, and when, when the next client comes and wants the same package, it will just serve that. So this way you will use the upstream only for the packages that are used inside the house, inside the company. So that will be my, my use case. Yeah, so like it only fetches things that have been requested. Yeah, I'm not sure if RMT can handle that. It's kind of a dumb, uh, I consider it kind of a dumb product on the whole, uh, in that it just kind of goes out, does one thing, doesn't usually break, doesn't have too many issues. Um, I think that functionality might be possible to script, but it would be potentially annoying with RMT. Uh, I can't read Ruby at all either, so I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone want to correct my system D syntax? Please help. <laughs> yeah, we're all in the same boat there. Cron. Cron. <laughs> yeah, just give up. Go back to Cron. All right. Awesome. I think, yeah, I'm ending a little bit early. Cool.